Welcome to Rogue Babble, I'm Definitive D, and today we are talking about The Birds of a Feather Affair. This is a novel based on the television series The Girl from Uncle, which is a spin off from the hit series The Man from Uncle. So, Uncle was a spy organization. And their members, when they would go into their headquarters, would wear these name tags, like I'm wearing right here. Uh, it is a yellow triangle with a number. Uh, I picked this up at a thrift store, and I'm glad I did, um, because I was really interested to see what the difference between the two series were. I was really hoping for a good, hearty, strong female lead. It was full of very, very sexist dialogue and it really shocked me that it was so sexist because I don't understand why you would create a TV series that is a spin-off where you have a female lead where you're not going to empower her as a female. I, I just think that's it's backwards. Here you are, you're given this gift. You're given this gift of a female character and they just threw it away. They just said, you know what we're going to do is instead of actually showing that a female spy is just as equally talented and capable as a male spy, you know, let's highlight the fact that she is a woman. I really don't know what Michael Avalon was, was thinking when he was writing this. Now, I know what you're thinking, that maybe I'm just a product of my time and that, oh, this, thing's, this can't be as bad as it is, but you, unfortunately, would be very wrong. Uh, I'm going to read a couple of passages from the book. So the first one. The redhead moved ahead, tall, vibrant, and athletic. Her figure was enviable. April shook her head, watching the sensuous twitch of buttocks beneath the beige skirt. The legs were superb, too. Miss Van Etta was a body built for bed. Now, now, I don't understand why you would need to over-sexualize a female character. Okay, let's just go on to another one. The Apache had relieved her of her handbag, personal effects, and even her bra, without having had to undress her. The bra had proven to be of black silk with a curious flexibility. The Apache was certain that it was as innocuous as the other secret weapon. In the next paragraph, you do find out that uh, she has a secret weapon in her bra, because that is exactly where females need to have secret gadgets in their bras, because clearly the only time that they're going to be doing any work is when their shirts are off. And, and it just, it, and of course that, that's not true, but that is just the mentality of this writing, and it's just, it's very infuriating. In what practical situation would it be advantageous to have a secret weapon in your bra? There is no reason why someone should have a secret weapon in their bra. I mean, James Bond does not have a, a gun, a hidden gun in his underwear. Like, that's just ridiculous, and I just don't understand why you would write that way. Here's, a, here's another passage of two gentlemen talking to each other. I, if I were you, Mr. Slate, and I were left alone with a woman of Miss Dancer's obvious charms, I would certainly know what to do so that the time did not hang heavy on my head. Again, why do we need to throw the sexualization of, of this main character in there? There's, there's no reason for it. It's just ridiculous. This is a bit of dialogue between uh, two of the bad characters. Another von Ada's green eyes went cold. Yes, and it very nearly killed me. Who asked you to interfere? Singh snarled. Is this women's work? Need I say more? Is this women's work? What is women's work? Women's work is everything. Everything and anything. And it's just absolutely bonkers. Um, why this is in here. Here's another sentence that you would never see in a James Bond book. Her heaving breasts strained at the bra. At this point in the story, she is uh, getting attacked. Uh, I believe there was a bit, there was an explosion. There's no reason to draw attention to her breasts in this situation. Here's another bit of dialogue from uh, Van Abba. Slate, is it sufficient to arrange the trade? Or another Van Abba said. Miss Dancer can't be much more than a female. I wasn't too impressed with her. And the thing that really does strike a nerve with me, especially in this situation, is this is a, that he has written a female character 
talking about another female character in, in this manner. Another thing that really bothered me was on the cover itself. She's 108 pounds of dynamite. She's April Dancer, Uncle's newest secret weapon. Why do we need to mention her weight? You never find out in Ian Fleming's works how much James Bond weighed. And then on the back, she moves with trained to kill reflexes, clicks with an IBM brain. She's cool, ingenious, and sexy as all get out. She's a pro from the top of her beautiful head to the tip of her chemically painted toenails. She's Mr. Waverly's right-hand girl, and her heart belongs to Uncle. Watch her infiltrate the ranks of Thrush as she tries to reach kidnapped Mark Slate, an uncle agent who's been held for ransom. That's too high to pay. See her in action. Five feet, five inches. 108 pounds of dynamite. Uncle's newest weapon. There are so many things wrong with that. I would consider myself a feminist, and books like these uh, really, really frustrate me. If you find this in a thrift store, leave it be. Don't waste your money, even if, no matter how cheap it is, uh, because it is absolutely not worth your time. From me to you, I hope your day is just tickety-boo. I'll see you soon.